Hello, and welcome to Synthetic Geometry for Six Years. During this presentation, we will examine the importance of the circle and its relevance in the Leaving Certificate syllabus, the best teaching, learning and assessment strategies when exploring circle theorems and common misconceptions and how to deal with them. To fully appreciate the importance of the circle, we must first understand the meaning of the word geometry. Geometry is derived from the Greek word geo meaning earth and metron meaning measure. Given that the circle has been one of the most important shapes throughout history, from the invention of the wheel in Stonehenge to medieval mathematics and modern mechanics, we can see that no study of the earth and its measurements would be complete without studying the circle. It is perhaps unsurprising, given its importance in the world around us, that the circle appears in no less than six areas of the Leaving Certificate curriculum. This includes coordinate geometry, complex numbers, area and volume, trigonometry, constructions and synthetic geometry. It is the synthetic geometry of the circle that links each of these topic areas together. However, it is not until sixth year that students will encounter it. The Project Maths Teacher Handbook recommends completing the geometry of the circle at the beginning of sixth year. This gives students time to construct a bank of useful theorems and axioms that are required when proving circle properties. It also allows students to become familiar and confident with geometric reasoning before attempting circle proofs. And finally, it ensures the majority of students have reached the formal operational stage of development required for deductive reasoning. Before encountering the geometry of the circle, students will have completed the geometry of triangle central to circle proofs. This includes Pythagoras' theorem and the properties of isosceles triangles. Students will also be familiar with the terminology involved in circle geometry, having completed one circle theorem at the junior cycle level. This theorem, Theorem 19, states that the angle at the centre of a circle on a given arc is twice the angle at any point of the circle standing on the same arc. Students would also have expanded on this idea to look at the special case where the angle at the centre of the circle is 180 degrees. This theorem is revisited in sixth year, along with the introduction of two new circle theorems, Theorem 20 and 21. The focus of the introductory lesson is Theorem 21, which states that the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the centre of a circle. This first lesson in circle geometry will take place in the computer lab. This is to facilitate a discovery-based learning environment. At the beginning of the lesson, students will be invited to use Desmos, a student response system, to complete activities and submit their answers throughout the lesson. Before the students start the first activity, the learning intentions are introduced and the success criteria agreed upon. The learning intentions for this lesson indicate that by the end of the lesson, students should be able to define the terms circle, radius, diameter, chord, secant and tangent, investigate the relationship between the chord and the centre of the circle and form a conjecture, and finally, produce a series of logical mathematical statements that reinforces their conjecture. The introduction of learning intentions informs students about what is expected of them and allows them to self-assess throughout the lesson. This is a form of formative assessment. For the first activity, students will work in pairs to match the diagrams with the correct name. These include the circle, radius, diameter, chord, secant and tangent. Following this, the students will then match the definitions to the correct label and diagram. This activates prior learning from the junior cycle curriculum as well as fifth year synthetic geometry. For example, students will have to distinguish between a line and line segment when assigning the definitions to the chord and secant. This is a crucial step in teaching the synthetic geometry of the circle 
as it will allow students to better articulate their ideas and discern known features of the circle when problem solving. Once all students have completed the activity, the teacher will recap the key vocabulary on the board. This word bank will be left on the board while students complete the remainder of the tasks. This will help students to inform their thinking and better articulate their ideas. The second activity in the lesson is taken from Developing Thinking in Geometry by Johnston Wilder and Mason. For the second task, the students are provided with a GeoGebra file that consists of a line and a circle. The task instructs students to first mark out the points of intersection of the line and the circle, constructing the line segment EF. Students are then instructed to construct the midpoint of the chord and trace its position as the line moves through the circle. Students can use the GeoGebra Trace tool to mark out the path of the midpoint to get a better sense of what is happening and form a conjecture. Once students have formed a conjecture, they will be encouraged to work in pairs to formulate a series of mathematical arguments to support their conjecture, which will then be submitted to the teacher via Desmos. Here, students see the formation of the perpendicular bisector of the chord that passes through the centre of the circle. This activity also provides students with an opportunity to extend their definitions of tangent to secant where the points of intersection coincide. This will prove beneficial later in the topic area. While the students complete the activity, the teacher will listen to students articulate their ideas and take note of what students are saying. This can be used later in the lesson to address common misconceptions and errors. As well as this, the teacher will use prompt questions to encourage students to experiment using GeoGebra. Useful phrases include, say what you see, and what is the same and what is different. It is important to continuously encourage students to manipulate the GeoGebra file, get a sense of what is happening and articulate their ideas. Before the end of the lesson, the teacher will review the student constructed proofs using the teacher dashboard tool on Desmos. The best proof will then be displayed on the board and the winning pair invited to explain their chain of reasoning to the rest of the class. Common misconceptions include students incorrectly assuming the value of an angle because it looks like a 90 degree angle or that the proof only holds true for horizontal and vertical chords. These misconceptions are overcome with the use of a discovery based approach to proofs in conjunction with the pedagogic strategy of conjecturing and convincing. This encourages students to provide strong evidence for each mathematical statement that they make until they are convinced of their reasoning. Anticipated areas of difficulty when teaching circle geometry include using the correct terminology and notation and visualising relationships and properties. This is overcome with the use of a word bank in each lesson and GeoGebra is used in the introductory lesson to build students' visualisation skills for use throughout the topic. Research indicates that the best methodology to use when teaching geometry is active learning. This is because it engages all learners and provides them with an opportunity to gain a deeper conceptual understanding of a topic while increasing academic achievement and developing a positive disposition. In summary, the geometry of the circle is an essential feature of the Leaving Certificate curriculum. It provides an opportunity for authentic discovery-based learning activities that can transform a student's educational experience. On top of this, it provides the teacher with a means to get a greater insight into the minds of their students through formative assessments.